Hey, hey, James. Hey, how you doing, Doc? Uh, hey, I'm doing awesome. I'm doing awesome. Thanks for taking some time out to have a conversation this morning. Absolutely, so, my pleasure. Absolutely, my yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, so I want to pronounce your last name correctly. I always do it. It's James Thrillkill, right? Real kill. Thrill kill. Yeah, it's like real kill with TH on the front of it. Thrill kill. All right. Thrill kill. Thrill kill. And, every, and yours? Yeah, every, and Hasi. Yeah. Hasi. Okay. Yeah. Mine's, mine's an old German mispronunciation, right? Oh, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, anyway, so the story, this is such an exciting thing to do because I was going around and I went to an art gallery and I was walking around and mm -hmm. I saw this piece of work that's behind me right now. Uh, mm -hmm. And and I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed with the emotion and Thank the you. color and the just transmitting so much joy and mm -hmm. potential and and such. And so um, it was wonderful. And that led to meeting the meeting the art gallery and then mm -hmm. meeting you and having a wonderful time with you and you and your partner and, yes. and having a great and then um then you offering to allow us to show your work here at maxwell mm -hmm. clinic mm -hmm. and and it's just it's it's given me such joy um so i wanted to i wanted to introduce folks to you because you as a human are actually you know one of the things i love most about the art and I think so often the art is, you know, we don't get to see the artist. Right. So I just, right. I'd like, I'd like to a number one highlight highlight your work here and ask uh -huh. the folks who want to see it. You know, it's here at the clinic, and also, um, I want to like you to tell us a bit about how you know yourself and how did you come into, especially this style because yeah. oh my gosh, it's so unique. It's, Thank you so it's much. Prof it's profound. So yeah, well, you know, uh, Dr. Hasi, my art story is one that is uh, really profound, uh, in my opinion. I uh, grew up in three public housing communities in Nashville, and I attended a school called Napier Elementary School. And my first grade teacher, Miss Stinson, told my mom I was drawing in class all day, and so she said he's probably gonna be an artist cause that's all he's doing in class, you know? And so my mom said, okay, uh, I love the fact that you draw, but you have to do your schoolwork too. So, you know, I, was, <laughs> I learned immediately to make the connection between good academics and good art. And so my mother, I mean, she bent over backwards making sure that I had art materials. She enrolled me in art classes. And then when I turned 13, you know, I'm the oldest of six kids and she took money that probably should have went gone for groceries and other things and bought me my first oil painting set. And so wow. I was just blown away that she had that kind of confidence in me. And so I started at an early age, just knowing how to use paints and that type of thing. And then uh, when uh, my mother's mother passed, my grandmother, we had the service in Nashville and one of my cousins came to town and he sat me down and, and said, I'm gonna show you some things about art because my mom told him that I was interested in art. He taught me how to draw and how to use the pencil to shade and that type of thing. And it, I mean, it advanced my art technique by 10 years. I, I, I tell him to this day, I'm so grateful for you taking the time to show me that lesson because when he showed me how to use the pencil, I would just draw stuff, but he said, if you turn it sideways, you can pick up values and highlights and that type of thing. He said, now go upstairs and look in the mirror and draw yourself. And I went upstairs and did this self-portrait in the mirror and used that technique. And it was just phenomenal to learn that you can get that kind of result from shading with the pencil. And yeah, so it's kind of funny. That's it's really kind of funny. It's almost in to kind of be your style now. It, it's such a, uh -huh. it's such a, it, it, it's, it's the, the, what you do with these multiple colors and how they pull out. Anyway, I, it's it's capturing like light. Nothing. Yeah, that's a great observation. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, and that's what he showed me. Yeah. And so at that point, I knew that art was my passion, but I'm like, how am I going to go to college and be an artist? You know, we got six kids, family doesn't have a lot of money. And so after the 10th grade, I had this incredible growth spurt and just my coordination and everything kicked in. And I ended up by my senior year being a highly recruited 
football, basketball, and track star. And so I had my choices of colleges, but there was no doubt what I was going to major in. And so from there, you know, I uh, traveled to Chicago after graduation, trying to find a better city to be an artist, but even went to California, but ended up migrating back to Nashville and just started doing art. Um, I, my first job, they just celebrated 50 years, was at the Centennial Art Center, where they hired me as an artist 42 years ago. And the Centennial Art Center used to be a swimming pool that was closed down when Black students tried to swim there. The city closed down all the swimming pools, but they turned the Centennial Pool into an art center. And so my first job teaching was there. And one of my assignments was to go back to the public housing communities I grew up in to teach art. You're talking about coming full circle in terms of giving back to a community that gave so much to me. And so I started wow. to go to classes and then had this wonderful opportunity to teach at a community center in another uh, community I grew up in called the Edge Hill Center. And that's when I started working with uh, youth living in the uh, inner city and uh, started a mural program that won all kinds of awards and that type of thing. And so I would go on to work for the mayor of Nashville, Phil Bredesen, as his arts and community affairs person. But through everything I did, I always continued to nurture my interest in art. Oh, that's fabulous. You know, and, and, and what has, and what does it allow you to express that words can't? Yeah, that's a great question. Because to that specific question, when I had students in the neighborhood who were quiet and introverted, I would invite them into the art class, give them a piece of paper and pencil and say, just tell me what's going on inside of you. And all this expression would come out even when they couldn't articulate it verbally. And so mm. for me as an artist who, um, you know, is uh, very grounded and spiritual and kind of know the source of my talent, what I try to express are things that, um, you know, uplift people, that give people hope, uh, that uh, represents harmony. And, you know, I always say when I'm doing uh, lectures and I've done lectures all over the world, uh, in South Africa, South America, London, Jamaica. But I say that when people study past civilizations, they look at the art from that period to kind of get yes. a sense of what things were like during that particular time, you know? And we study the great masters and Picasso and Rembrandt and all of those to get a feel for what the conditions were like during that time. One of my favorites was Michelangelo. But, um, you know, I try to think that at some point, a hundred years from now, when people look back on this particular period, they'll look at some of the art that was created back then to get a feel for how things were. And so the messages that I want to em emote from my images are one of appreciation for humanity and the importance of people treating each other with respect. And so through my style evolution, I started out painting with oils, uh, then started doing a lot of brush work, but I was always the type of person that wanted to challenge myself creatively. So I was in my studio one day and I said, let me put the brush down and try to palette nice and see what kind of results I get. And it gave me a chance to really be a little looser with my approach and get more textured surfaces. And then I started using colors in a non-traditional way, you know, instead of the regular green, yellow or blue for something, try something really different, even with people's skin tones. And the public reaction to it was so overwhelming that I knew I had discovered an approach that really appealed to people. Because especially when I'm doing art shows and kids come up and they want to touch the surface and feel the texture and the, the parents are like, no, 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 don't touch. I said, no, let them touch it and let them feel the art and become a part of it. And it's a wonderful thing yeah. to watch you know, people's reactions to something that you create in the intimacy of your studio but then when people see it, they talk about how it makes them feel good and it makes them happy and it reminds them of their childhood and different things like that. So through my imagery, I try to uh, express those positive feelings that make people feel good. And, you know, from your reaction when you went to the gallery to say the joy and the excitement that you brought you brought you from that piece I call rejuvenation 
That's exactly mm. what I was looking to do. And, mm. and people confirmed that, including yourself, when you share your reactions to the piece. That's beautiful. I mean, because it's a, and artists, I think what you said there, as far as, you know, when we look back to generations, we do look at the art of that time. Right? Mm -hmm. We look at the architecture, the art, you know, some of the, but the art really tells us, you know, it depicts, you know, what are the, what are the, the struggles? What are the, the aspirations? Mm -hmm. You know, no what, you know, how, how does all that, you know, the, 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 you know, what the C.S. Lewis said is the, you know, the shame and glory of being a human, right? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and that, 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 you know, what are we struggling with at that time? And so, Absolutely. so, and, and, and I, um, you know, it was, it was uh, yeah, so I think it's a profound actually to, to step back and to, to see what does each piece evoke for an individual, you know, mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. at Maxwell Clinic, we're, everything we're focused on is personalized systems medicine, you know, what, what, mm -hmm. what makes an individual their best, what is their Maxwell, Absolutely. right, how, how are they, right. how are they maximized, and, 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 and what is it for each of us to, live our lives to the fullest extent that we are as individuals how do we mm -hmm. discover enable and enjoy how we have been created and, absolutely and, right living into that and right that's i think this is just anyway it's it's profound i i, this, I was i was coming over here i was kind of chuckling when you brought these brought these beautiful works here this uh -huh. is one this this is one do you do you have a, do you have a name for this one we don't have our tag yeah it's called yet. it's called not your circus elephant <laughs> <laughs> not your circus elephant that's definitely right. true that's right. definitely true but you know we do a lot of work with alzheimer's and mm -hmm. you know an elephant is you know that that kind of symbol of keeping your memory right yes, the elephant absolutely. never forgets right absolutely and so it was beautiful one of our one of our dementia patients came by and saw the elephant and said that's the where i'm going oh, i'm wow. going to get my mem my memory of my elephant oh, back wow, again man. and and you, and, you, and you start you start to think what symbols mean but but instead of it being this gray pachyderm mm -hmm. instead it's this vibrant technicolor mm -hmm. uh, you can see the life the life of the life of the elephant as Absolutely. opposed to the elephant. Absolutely. Uh, I, I just love, I just love yeah. it. I and it's, it's love like it. the elephant is exerting its freedom and independence. It's like, I'm not going to be confined yeah. to a circus. I'm not your circus elephant. I'm stepping out into my own reality yes. and all of that. Yeah. So yeah, it's a lot of fun uh, doing that one. Oh, that's great. Can you tell me about the one behind you? The, um, the, the painting behind you? Yeah, this is a piece that I recently finished. Uh, it's, it's a young girl, it's called Kiss from an Angel. And so it's a picture of a young girl who has beautiful spread angel wings and she's blowing a kiss uh, to just represent sharing love and joy and that type of thing. And so because of the style that I use with the vibrant colors and that type of thing, I said, I wanted to start doing some angelic pieces and let their wings represent all of those different variations and colors. Because to me, it represents a universality of embracing people. And, you know, everyone is invited into the joy and that kiss is for everybody, you know? And so uh, I was really happy with uh, the way it turned out because I wanted a long canvas where I could have her wings just really spreading. And then that beautiful gesture of blowing a kiss to the viewer. Oh, I love it. I love <laughs> Thank it. You. I love it. Thank That's you. Great. But, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to your to your question about my work, uh, you know, I feel really blessed to have the talent to do what I do. And after years of working in a corporate position as a diversity and inclusion specialist for a global construction company uh, for the past years, five years to be able to just wake up and do art every day is such a feeling of freedom. I always knew that I was working toward that point, but I feel like the work I did up to that point was beneficial too, because it was impacting communities and individuals. But to now be able to focus on my art exclusively and to um, see the impact that it's having on people, you know, people who 
uh, you know, use art for their environments to help them to feel better. People like yourselves that use art to help enhance the environment where individuals are coming for healing. And, you know, the conversation that Peg and I had with you and uh, Lindsay at the uh, beginning of our introduction and to hear some of you all's thoughts about what you were trying to do with the clinic. I mean, I knew my work reflected some of those values, but then to go back to my studio and to paint specifically to the conversation that we had was so much fun, you know? And uh, it's like an, an extension of the healing uh, from the expertise that you all provide. And that kind of collaboration to me is so important. Yeah, I love Ram Das has a wonderful quote. He says, we're all just here walking each other home. Oh, yeah, that's a great quote. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Isn't that a great quote? It, it, at, right. at one time, at one, at one point, you, everything is meaningful and, uh -huh. and, no, and nothing needs to be hard. That's right. That's right. You know, Absolutely. we just have to Absolutely. we just have to be who we are, be who yeah. we are, the, the best right. version of ourselves and walk alongside each other. Right. Uh, Absolutely. And that doesn't have to be doesn't have to be as hard. So, that's right. And celebrate uh, yeah, each other. Yeah. But, yeah. And that's why a lot of the images that you'll see me create, I mean, people are just celebrating, just throwing your yeah. hands open to either invite people yeah. in for a hug or just to celebrate the joy that you feel. And I love those expressions, number one, in creating it with the texture and the vibrant colors, but then the reactions from people and how it draws them in, you know? And so it's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to contribute to the holistic uh, development of an individual. I love that about creativity, you know, and so that's why I enjoy it so much. Oh, that's awesome. Well, James, I actually have to go see one of those patients right now. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, it has been an honor. Thank you for taking the time uh, to, mm -hmm. to, to be with, with me. And thank you very much for this opportunity to show off your work. I appreciate it. Anybody come by Maxwell Clinic, come see James' work. It's amazing. Uh, it's really just stunning and appreciate the great work. Is there another place they can see some of your, your work? Uh, yes, you have... there's, there's a location in the Gulch called Art Beat Nashville, where you all mm -hmm. first discovered my work. And then also uh, Woodcuts Gallery in North Nashville, and then the Chauvet Arts Gallery in downtown Nashville. And so okay. there are a number of locations. And then I participate in art shows in different places around town. So. Uh, people can find me. It's not hard. So I just want to say thank you to you all for the collaboration that we're involved in. And I'm really happy to see how it's getting off to what I think is a great start. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. Bless you. All right. My pleasure. Bless you as well. Take care. Okay. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Now. Bye.